Uh, Wiggins also is looking quite cool. They're all waiting for what they know will be the final showdown. There's not huge time gaps between them all. Only the leader and the rest of the big time gap exists. So Contador is happy the way this is going. He's got everybody under his wings and at 10 kilometers to go, as it will be shortly, can't get four minutes then. But the riders now, as they climb this hill, at such a, an incredible speed. This is Sebastian Minar, who is about to lose contact. There is the mountain slope. We're off to the right when we make our final approach, but we're not above the tree line yet. And when we are, look how long that road is. Is. And once they climb out of the tree line, don't forget that's when they'll start to get buffeted by these winds, which are between 20 and 30 kilometers an hour at this point. But when we get a little bit further up the climb, we're looking at maybe 50 to 60 kilometer an hour winds. 3 minutes 16 from these riders here right down. There's another view as we come up from the bottom of our picture here, not the left-hand side, as the riders climb up to the summit, uh, up to the weather station. Looks a bit empty because all the installations that bring the Tour de France to the world were sitting 35 kilometres away and uh, commentating, and it's a very bizarre feeling looking out the window and seeing moving traffic rather than closed roads and people waving flags. But anyway, Minar looks as though he's losing contact here. I'm not surprised. They're flying on the slopes of Mont Ventoux today. How do they ride this speed up a mountain like this? Well, Nicky Sorensen, uh, job done. He is now sw swinging away from the front end of the main field. His job done for the team. He's made it as hard as possible, trying to set up a possible attack by Andy Schleck and brother Frank. Leaving now just Chris Anker Sorensen, followed though there by Sergio Paulinho, very solid rider from Team Astana, Olympic silver medalist in Athens behind uh, Paolo Bettini. Look at that, Paul. One, two, three in the Tour de France. One, two, three three in our pictures here. Contador is first, the left rider in white is second, Armstrong sits third. Will that be the order in Paris, I wonder? Andreas Cloden sitting behind Alberto Contador, the German rider who uh, lost uh, the back end of the train on the road up to the Col de la Colombière and the possibility of this team finishing first, second and third. But that all still could happen this afternoon. But the way Saxo Bank are riding, I don't think their men, Frank and Andy Schleck, are in bad form this afternoon. They're just waiting and biding their time to launch a vicious attack. Well, that's Albert Timmer coming back. He was in the breakaway as he takes a good look at the faces of the riders he's never seen from the front on a mountain before uh, to see just how hard they are climbing this mountain now. And number 106 is Christophe Lumervel. He's holding on to his ninth place, but he's only one second to the good of the rider in front of him. Sorensen, number 37, he's done his work and has cracked now to be expected. Very soon, they'll just be the leaders of the Tour de France together. Well, uh, Saxo Bank have assassinated their own team this afternoon in, a, in, a, in a try, an attempt to try and assassinate the rest of the leaders of the Tour de France. Dropping back, uh, this man was in the breakaway earlier on in the day, Cyril Lemoyne. He's slowing up and going backwards. The flag of St. George there, and Bradley Wiggins is doing the ride of his life in the Tour de France this year. We've never had a rider challenge for a podium like this for years and years. The last man was Robert Miller, who finished fourth. Before that, we must look back to Tommy Simpson, who finished sixth. Well, as they drop in now, one after another, this is another one going. This is Vladimir Karpitz, the leader of Katusha. He's also uncoupled at the back. These are the three leaders now, with their jerseys flying to the wind as they climb Mont Ventoux. The next banner they will see will be five kilometres from the summit. It's still a little way yet, and it looks as though Tony Martin has refound his legs, which uh, took him through the Pyrenees with such success. Well, he's uh, just setting the tempo. It's his own pace. He's uh, uh, there's a attack. Move. Two started. Frank Schleck there, Phil, covered immediately by Lance Armstrong. That's all Armstrong has to do is follow Frank Schleck, because if he can hold Schleck, uh, then he'll be somewhere near the result at the end of the day, and he will hold his third position. Well, uh, that was the first move by Frank Schleck. He's not created the distance that he wanted to, and immediately Armstrong was there. Armstrong this afternoon, Phil, will ride his own race. He said so much this morning. He will stay on the there wheel of Frank Schleck an and make sure that he keeps there in third. Another acceleration by Schleck. He's almost playing with Lance Armstrong. Armstrong just says, keep doing that, and I'll keep following. We're still in the trees here as we climb towards Charlie Renard, and then the rides will turn to their left. Contador has just made sure everything he's in order, he's got Andy Schleck just behind, Le Mavel is in the spot of bother here as Pelazotti pedals back up to the group, uh, so Le Mavel could be losing his ninth place in favour of Astolosa. 
Look at the face of Armstrong there. He's just telling Frank, you ain't going nowhere this afternoon, mate, because I'm going to stick all over your back wheel. But his teammate and brother is coming forward. Now, if Andy Schleck attacks, that's going to be a different story. Well, it'll be a savage acceleration from the man in white. He's checking over his shoulder. Contador's got him under his wing. It's his job to try and follow Andy. These two great youngsters from Luxembourg, Andy and Frank, are hitting them one-on-one. -on -one. And these boys knew it had to be this way because they don't just want to be on the podium on, in France. In Paris, they want to be number one. Sliding backwards now, Sergio Paolino. He's one of the team helpers on Team Astana. Christian Vandervelde, he's done his job Astralosa for... Too. Astralosa slipping back, Franco Pelizzotti slipping back, there's probably only, only going to be the top six riders in the overall classification field left at the front. I did notice that uh, Vicenzi Nibali is in there as well for Team Liquigas in the green. Yes, there's Nibali. So we're left with the stars of this year's Tour de France, the last mountain of the Tour de France. They go shoulder to shoulder. They will throw every punch they've got left in the Tour now, and the result will be the final shuffling of the classification. Bradley Wiggins is hooked up at the back of this group as the white jersey, second in the Tour de France, goes again. Contador, he just sits there and plays the tango. He's not in any difficulty whatsoever. This is the toughest part of the climb. Well, there's a lot more tough stuff to come a little bit further up but they are looking out of the acceleration Schleck and Contador have got the gap that they want first and second overall but this is not really what Andy Schleck is looking for he's looking to try and gap his brother now watch for a move With and it's Lance Armstrong, Armstrong, Armstrong coming Lance Armstrong is there now that's interesting I thought he would wait for Frank to make the move it's almost as if Andy is inviting his brother to join him but he's got a shock now because he's inviting Lance Armstrong who is also being shadowed by Frank Nibali has joined in as well now Wiggins is still there too and notice that Alberto Contador is doing nothing at all to set the pace making with Andy Schleck he's sitting and biding his time he has absolutely no reason at all Phil to attack Samuel de Moulin has been caught and dropped from the front group as well this is the race for the final jersey in the Tour de France now white versus yellow Nibali sits seventh overall as he holds it there the riders slide away this is William Bonnet he was part of the league group as well he's gone the King of the mountains looks as though he's gone as well as all of the riders crack here this is Andreas Cloden is he in trouble if he is he could be losing his place overall in front of him is Roman Kreuziger you know you mustn't push yourself into the red zone on a climb like this you've got to conserve because we've got still 11 kilometers to get to the summit of this climb and Armstrong is still in contact but so too is Bradley Wiggins well, this could be good news for Bradley Wiggins if Andreas Cloden has cracked because he needs to stay clear to consolidate his fourth place overall. He, to have a go at, at Armstrong, he will have to wait a little bit longer. But at the moment, Bradley Wiggins is having a very good ascent here. No, he certainly is. Uh, just having a quick look here, you can see that uh, Andy Schleck doing the tempo making. Uh, he's trying to set something up he really wants his brother away number 17 there that you briefly noticed uh, a real revelation of the Tour de France this year these riders here have been tailed off and another attack this time one of the best climbers in the world if not the second best climber because the first best climbers right behind him Contador has to do nothing except follow today to win the Tour de France he's trying to hold the attack of Andy Schleck I think in favor of Armstrong no I think he's trying to pay back Armstrong for the help and assistance there's the move now coming from Frank Schleck behind but all over Frank Schleck's back wheel is Lance Armstrong Armstrong is not going to let that podium position slip away from him Frank Schleck to the left, he doesn't look so good to me actually looking at Frank's face and Frank just keeps staring them out, if he's trying to cycle them out he looks straight at the face there of Bradley Wiggins who doesn't look to be in trouble he had a rough ride on the Col de Colombia, they gave him the old 1-2 and he faded but I think he's got his head back in gear now and he's looking good well uh, coming back from the leading group, uh, this is uh, Mikael Delage all of those riders in that 16-man lead group feel slowly but surely being overtaken by these men here now this is a bit further down there's Jürgen Vandenbroek, there's Roman Krutiger, they are trying to ride themselves back into this race, the cars which were behind the breakaway being stopped at the side of the road, Armstrong is riding a superbly good defensive ride here but I don't think as you said Phil, Frank Schleck I don't think has got it in his legs this afternoon, his brother though certainly does have it. He's trying to coax the best out of his brother Frank here Andy, uh, but what has happened is the pace has slowed again, they might let Andreas Cloden back into this, he was the other rider in those three chains. 
chases. He might well get himself back into this group, and that'll be another card for Astana to play.